delay. Uh, Michael, can you hear me? Are you there? Michael's in the room, but uh, I'm not sure if he can, if he's actually in the room. I see yeah, he might be right, right. He's in the room in spirit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you ever he, see that's this? That's true, story? actually. That is uh, correct. That's a yeah. correct statement. He's in spirit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in his body. <laughs> did you ever see this um, paying double? This yes. Here? Yes. Awesome yeah, study. Refresh. Yep, does it's an awesome of, study. Does, does the language of uh, double payment relate to God's judgment on the church? So tonight, yes. Lord willing, we'll try to take a look at the number two. Right. <laughs> and really an in-depth study, I think, that hopefully might explain uh, some of the uh, issues that, you know, we may be having with a couple of the verses. Right. Some of the verses related. Uh, so does the language of paying double relate to God's judgment on the church? And the number two, what I'm going to propose uh, tonight is that just like all the other numbers, judgment, salvation, judgment, salvation, depending on the context. Yep. Right. Right. And we'll see also that the number two, it is uh, pointing to the body of Christ, which is not surprising. Wheat sure. and tares, wheat and tares, sheep and goats. Two uh, debtors, two debtors, two olive trees, two witnesses, two candlesticks, right. two and two, both grow together. That kind of an idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then feel free to post, um, feel free to post any verses you have also, Eric. Oh, okay. I'm actually using a handheld device, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll have to go on. Okay. Michael, are you, are you in? Yeah, yeah, now I'm in. Okay, all right. Now I can hear you. Um, right. So, yeah, so don't hesitate to post any verses. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. So to Mr. Camping, I think to some degree, he used to, I guess he mentioned that, right? The fact that Christ sent the disciples out two by two. Right. I, Even I the animals Christ, on the ark went two by two. Right. And by right. sevens and then two by two. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Two of every sort. Right. Um, so we'll see, first of all, that there is a reference there to the to the body of Christ. The number two spiritually revelation. Eric just mentioned. Uh, Revelation eleven three, 3, and right. I will give power unto my two witnesses. The two witnesses. You know, most people, there's some people, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. that they've mentioned that this is talking about Moses and Elijah. Yeah, that's the common uh, teaching in among a lot of churches, yeah. I've heard that when I grew up, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Moses and Elijah, because they both appeared in the right. Mount of Transfiguration. That's, the, that's a common theological yeah. talk uh teaching actually and they're, they're talking about uh literally also right not just spiritually they they think that it's they're going to come back is, is yeah referring to moses and elijah okay yeah they come back actually uh, they, they, some churches believe that yeah and then in verse four these are the two <laughs> olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth what a name day. what a name for the church right there you see that so two olive trees two candlesticks Represent the body of Christ. You see that? Yeah, yeah. That's a name. That's another name for him, right there. Right, right. And Revelation a little bit further it talks about the candlesticks. Right. Uh, Christ standing in the midst of the candlesticks. Amongst the body of Christ. Right. Right, right. Judgment and, and salvation, right there. Yeah. yeah. We see in the the other day we were talking about the parable uh, of the two debtors or, or the servant, the un, uh, right. the ungrate. How is it the uh, the one servant, I forgave thee all that debt. In Luke chapter 7, 41, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. Had two, two of them, right. And they yeah. were both forgiven, by the way, on that, in, that con, in that parable. In that context. And that's why yeah, I in mentioned that, that apparently God seems to be looking at the corporate body. That, that's his people. He refers to the body of Christ, to the church. Right. Just like in the old days, he referred to the nation of Israel as, as his people. Right. Well, this, the, you're right. The inheritance that he the inheritance that he purchased. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he talked about bringing them into the land of Canaan. Yeah. And he didn't single them out. He didn't say, well, I'm only going to bring in the saved and not the unsaved. Right. So I right. wasn't really making a distinction then. 
So uh, corporately, this was the body of Christ. And we know through other language in the Bible that many of them perished in the wilderness. So they weren't really saved. And right. That, that's how I think. They were we, judged right immediately. I, you, you remember, really, I don't mean to digress, but you remember when they made a golden cat. Aaron told everyone to remove the earrings out they ate, that they got from Egypt right. and build um, the, 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 uh, to molt the cow, to forge a cow, and they mm -hmm. called it Elohim. And right after that, the serpents bit them, and a lot of them died. And then, of course, Moses takes a serpent on a pole, and when it looked, it became healed. Right, right. So we judgment and salvation right there. Right. Yeah, pointing to God's judgment. Um, so the two debtors, in Genesis chapter 27, verse 45, until thy brother is anger, turn away from thee, and he forget that that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I, this I thought was interesting, why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? Now, uh, refresh my memory here. Genesis 27, verse 45. It's talking about Jacob and Esau? Yes. I'm, yes. It's correct. Okay. And so the idea, we see the number two again. Why should I be deprived also of both of you in one day? That, I think, is kind of rhetorical because if you look at the church in the day of judgment, there is judgment actually comes on the unsaved body, ultimately. Right. Right. And God judges Babylon. Right. So we can see there uh, the, the spiritual tie in there. Because, Matthew 13, yeah. yeah, Matthew 13, 30, let both grow together. Right. I, mean, I just think it's amazing how when you put these a lot of these verses side by side, then Lord willing, you I mean, you, you can't help but coming to that conclusion that God is looking at the number two in a variety of different ways, pointing to the body of Christ. The, the body church. of Christ, right, the church. Let both grow together until the heart. And, and you know what? He looks at those two mm -hmm. as one man, right. as one individual. Exactly, yeah. Right. As, as we've talked about, I've offered mm -hmm. that uh, the God is looking at the church as one person. One person, right. Right, and refers right. to the body of Christ as a man. Right. You know, spiritually. Uh, Matthew 13, 30, no, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 17, 36, two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. So there it is again. Right. The number two, 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 two shall be taken, both go together. Genesis 32, verse eight, and Esau said, I'm sorry, and, and said, if Esau come to, to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. So you right. see how this would look, tie right into Luke chapter 17, verse 36. Two shall be in the field, one is taken. So if Esau comes, Esau here, I, I propose uh, referring to Babylon, the unsaved right. body. Edom. Esau Edom. is Edom. He was red. It's the same word as Adam in the Hebrew. But yeah, right, right. this is Edom, yeah. So right. Edom, Esau I, comes and smites. Mount Seir. Then the other, that would be the elect. That would be, these are the ones left in Luke chapter 17, verse 36, spiritually. Right. Uh, shall escape. Isaiah 47, verse 9. But these two shall come and shall come to thee in one moment, in a moment, in one day. The two things I think uh, is important here, also the number two. Mm-hmm. And the word day, in one day. What day is that? The day, the day of yeah. the Lord. The well, day of the Lord. Of course, we're talking about how these might uh, reflect or come right into the great tribulation and God's judgment on the on the body. Um, so the other one is left. But these two, that was Isaiah 47, verse 9. And let's take a look at Isaiah 51, 19. These two things are come unto thee, who shall be sorry for thee, desolation and destruction, and the famine and the sword. Is that two or, okay, that was a. Hey, a notice word. that, notice really quick in Isaiah 51, 19, that there's okay. two things, there's, there, every, the judgment is doubled here. Watch this. Two things, 
well, the word things doesn't show up in the Hebrew. Come upon thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Watch this. Desolation and destruction. That's two. It's the same thing, though. It's, it's, right. one, it's one destruction. Right. The famine and the sword, which is also the it's same. Pair. So they're paired up as one event. That's why I put the, the little comment there. That That's my, uh, you know. Or two or four. Oh, there you go. No, well, you're, 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 you're highlighting the fact that desolation and destruction right. uh, and the famine and the sword are actually, well, it's paired up desolation, and destruction, famine and sword. Yeah, this is all the same language as in, in one event. In parentheses, I put, is that two or four? It's, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. In other areas, God makes reference to uh, the four uh, horsemen. Uh, By the, in the God word, does use the number four, I guess. Yeah, God, God uses the number four as time and seasons, is what because time and seasons, the sun, moon, and stars, as time signatures were created on the fourth day. Four right. is number very important in the Bible. Mis yeah, people, yeah, that, they, people, three, three, people three. have misinterpreted number four altogether, and it's not. It, it has to do with its with time signatures right, of the Bible. Right. For example, when Elias, when Jesus Christ. Came to Lazarus. It was the fourth day. He told him to come. The fourth day. Why was it the fourth day? Because it was a time appointed. That's why he told him to come out. He come, told him to come forth on the fourth day. Not the third day. The fourth day because it's time appointed. That's what that refers to. But yeah, amazing. That's that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the sword. You know, in other areas, God Amen. talks about the sword, famine. Amen. Uh, I forgot the other two where He makes reference to the body of Christ coming on the judgment. But wow. in this in this instant, uh, you're right. Uh, God is pairing them up. Apparently, desolation and destruction. That's a pair. That's right. the number two, and then famine and the sword. That's that's a pair, pair, and that's another number two. But it's paired up. Yeah, it's paired up. It's amazing. And then Jeremiah two thirteen. For my people have committed two evils. Isn't that interesting? They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Well, isn't that? That's because they thing? broke the law of God. The yeah. law of God was broken. Remember, Moses came. This Moses comes down from Mount Sinai after he's told that the children of Israel are playing in the world. They they, they 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 heard the noise and they're playing. Well, Moses saw that he drops the he throws the Ten Commandments, the law of God, onto the mountain and the base because he mm -hmm. broke. They broke the law of God. That's what that symbolized. Same thing with here. They forsaken the fountain of living waters and they hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns because they can't hold water because they broke the law of God who, or they broke the fountain of living waters, who is Christ himself is what's yeah. the two evils that you're referring to. Same thing. It's paired up. Yeah. But, right, 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 but what I, I guess my point is, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not really looking at two separate, uh, distinct incidents. No. This is really God One. repeating pretty much. One is in view. It's one in view, but yeah. Right. But right. the important Amen. thing is looking at the number two. God, number I two. believe, is emphasizing the number two. Amen. Yeah. As related to not only the body of Christ, but the judgment that comes on the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Double rewards for wickedness, recompensing the work of their hands. Uh, Exodus 22, 4. If the fet if the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. Huh. Yep. Double. And what I, I guess, eventually propose is the, the fact that the number two is referring to God's judgment on the body, on the church. On recompensing, yeah, because he stole. He's a thief. Right, right. He's, we're stole, say, yeah, he's, he's a thief. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing in uh, verse seven, Exodus 22. And if a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep and it be stolen out of man's house, if the thief be found. And who is a thief in the Bible? According to the Bible, is God the false finds prophets? The, the false prophets are. Yeah. The false prophets. Uh, those that are yeah, coming kind of in the other ways, a thief and a robber. Yeah. And if Another the thief, way is, yeah, Christ. yeah and, and the idea, I think, of the thief uh, being caught, yeah. uh, again, referring to God's judgment, and mm. notice that the thief is going to pay double. Double <laughs> what? I mean, how how would that come into play? You know? You're not right. Yeah. How, how, how does a thief pay double? Double what? I mean, double double stripes? Yeah, it was whatever it was. Let's see. Pay double. Let's see. Exodus chapter 7. 
and she hold on a second. Um, I was just looking at this today, actually. Twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah. So, how would the thief pay double? So we see that the the double there um, is certainly talking about the the judgment, uh, the same uh, that we've seen with the number two. Reward her, Revelation eighteen verse six. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works. In the cup which she have filled, fill to her double. So again, I mean, if we're going to look at this number literally, the number two or the double, then we would have to somehow identify what this double is, right? It would have to be, you know, number one, God is making specific reference to something. And then number two, he's talking about something else. But like we saw earlier in uh, Isaiah 51, uh, 19, God is pairing them up, but it's really talking about the same disobedience. Yeah, it is. The same judgment on the church. So double unto her according to her works. Now on the surface, it doesn't appear to be saying a whole lot. But when you put all these verses together, we see uh, we, we should get a little more insight on the nature of the number two. And, and we'll see some other uh, verses here that um, that should be interesting. Let's see. Matthew 23, verse 15. Can you guys see? Margaret, how are you doing there? Can you see? I'm doing screen? fine. Thank you. Yes, I can see it with my magnifier. Oh, okay. <laughs> how about you, Michael? I like that magnifier you got because yes, yeah, I that worked it. perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Margaret is like a, an inspector there with a. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> good. Take it easy. Inspecting the word and all. Right. Amen, right. brother. Amen. <laughs> All right, uh, Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land, and to make one proselyte, when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. So again, the, the number two is in view. As Babylon, Jeremiah 51, 49. As Babylon have caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Do you think there's a reference to the number two there? Um, in other words, what verse uh, is that again? Sorry, well, I actually what verse judgment, that? judgment comes on the body, uh, as Babylon have caused the slain of Israel to fall. That would appear to be talking about the, the apostasy, the falling away, yeah, yeah. And number and, two on the judgment side, and there's number two on the salvation side, no, no, actually, uh, in Jeremiah 51 they, 49, they, right? Yeah, it's the they, same thing, they, they both appear to be judgment because one. Is a judgment on the on the one third, on the body, uh, the death of the two witnesses, and then the second so, one, right, right, the death of Babylon. So Babylon in Jeremiah fifty one forty nine, Babylon has it's actually a parable as comparing as Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of the earth. So. Um, oh, right, right. It's okay. saying the same thing, but it's it's it's, it's actually a it's, it's saying the same exact thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I put it there because the the number two seems to be in view, but not in a context of uh, judgment or salvation, but rather the the first judgment on the body of Christ coming into the great tribulation uh, that Babylon causes or causes the two witnesses uh, two witnesses to be killed. Or beating the men servants, the maid servants, and then God recompensing judgment or recompensing um, on Babylon. Yeah, yeah. Right at the time, right at the, after the tribulation. Right. First uh, Timothy four fourteen. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Okay, let, let, let me move His on. works were evil, so there, um, 
Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's saying somewhat the same thing as the verse uh, before that, right? It's the same thing. Yeah, you're correct. You did it. That's a good point there. You put that verse right there. It's the same. You know, it's the same thing. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's saying the same exact thing. Right, right. Yeah. One judgment. There's and no then, confusion there. You know, today, there, there's some people, they're looking at, uh, and we've talked about this before, they're looking at a judgment on the church and then a judgment on the world, the outside world. That's confusion, yeah. actually. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't what make sense I, at all. What we've offered is that there is the judgment on the body of Christ, the corporate right. body, where the elect, they were subject to this tribulation, subject to this judgment, and then God transitions, not to the world, but to mm -hmm. Babylon. And that's what we see here, okay, yeah, if we're right. understanding Babylon to be the church. As Israel, where is that verse again? Uh, yeah, Jeremiah 51, 49. As Babylon have caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. So Israel and earth are synonyms of the Bible. That's referring to the church already. Not on, right, right. And not only it's that. It's not talking about, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. Yeah, I think people are confused. They want to, and that's why the, there's a problem with the, with, with some of the doctrine that, that's generated now. Because they're, it's like saying, it's like, it's like the Trinity. People right. confuse the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's the same thing. They're trying to. They're doing the same thing with these verses, right. with Earth and world and cause or the world, the Earth and the planet and all. They're confusing. They're they're separating it and they're adding. This is the world. This is the church. It's in, 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 and what they're doing is they're creating confusion when they do that because they themselves I mean. don't understand that Israel and the Earth and the world are actually one and the same. They're synonyms for the church, and that's, that's the point. Of the church body, exactly. In Jeremiah 51 49, I think a, a point of confusion people see the word earth and they mm -hmm. they suppose or they think that this is talking about the outside world, huh. right? Well, of course, we live in the outside world. world. My good, we live in the world, we're not outside yeah. of the world, we live right. in right. Well, this they make that separation it doesn't make sense. The church and the world, right? It's, it's, a, this, it's about yeah. Christ and the church, it's that's not about Christ little, and yeah. the world. Yeah. Then right. that church is a, is a, the unsaved, the the tares, and the saved, the body of Christ, the saved within the body. It's talking right. about the people of God or those that associate the, that they call themselves want to carry His name. Right. Yeah. And right. and we see we see that 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 transition. You see the Babylon caused the slain of Israel to fall. That is the the Babylon, the unsaved body. The you know by the, and and if you if you try to reason that out. Some people say, well, Babylon being the world caused the church to fall away or caused the church, you know, caused judgment to come on the church. But they're still looking at Babylon as the world. However, well, how does Babylon come into the church? Right. So Babylon is the church. It is it the is church. Right. It's like it Egypt and exactly. Syria are the right. church. Exactly. Those that are supposedly right. bringing God's word. And that's how they cause Israel to fall. And then now God reverses judgment. So at Babylon, that's again, that's the church, the same people that caused the death of the two witnesses. Now God causes them to go against to right. go against each other, actually. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's right. And and that's the same thing that's repeated here in 2 Timothy 4:14. Uh, uh Jeremiah 16, 18. And if first, and first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. There it is again. Because they have defiled my land, they have filled uh, mine inheritance with the carcasses of the and their, of their detestable and abominable things. So I guess the point here is that just the word double keeps coming up, where apparently it's not really a double. It's just a, a, a word for judgment. So that when God is making reference to the, the double payment, he's really focusing on the body of Christ, yeah. on the church. Right. right. So we can't really say, well, number one is this and number two is that. <laughs> uh, Psalm 12, 2. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. So there it is again. You know, these are the kind of verses that you read them casually. You just glance over them. Oh, OK. Well, that's interesting. They have a double heart. They speak, you know, with a double heart, they speak. And then we, we tend to relate that with the way we do things, I guess. Uh, this person is a double-minded man and so on. 
But keeping in mind that this is the Bible and, and everything, you know, is there for a reason. You know, it, it's not just idle words. So we have to, uh, when we allow the Bible to define the terms, we begin to see, a, you know, Lord willing, a bigger spiritual yeah. picture. Jude chapter 1, verse 12, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Right there. Well, how is that possible? Twice dead. I mean, let's try to make sense out of that. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead. <laughs> twice dead. Twice dead. Yeah. So well, is it possible that, I mean, we're still talking about the body of Christ. Is it referring to the, the death of the, uh, the two witnesses? And then the death of Babylon, it's possible. I mean, if that yeah. were the case, I don't think there would be a conflict in there because we're still talking about the body of Christ. But it's just interesting how God, God I, apparently is making reference to the number two. Again. Well, they're, this is, they're twice dead because they're plucked up by the roots. They have well, the no root, roots. The root they, is they're Christ. plucked up by the roots and the roots is Christ. There's right. no Christ. You're dead. In right. fact, you're not. You're spiritually dead. And in other words, there. Yeah, this is pretty. This is the language of the language of being spots. Uh, you feed yourself without fear, without Christ. You're feeding yourself um, without Christ, and they are clouds without Christ, without the water, right. without eternal life. So, twice dead is a, a great way of saying. Remember, the church is called. The church is no is identified with the number two. So they're dead. With the, with the, to, so the church is dead here, spiritually dead, is what right. it's talking yeah. about. Because it, the word twice is the number two, two mm -hmm. identified five of the church are twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And who can do that is remember every branch of me that don't bear fruit, what's God do? Right. He, he he cuts it off and throws it in the fire. In the, in the fire. Twice yeah, dead. That's exactly up. the same plucked. thing there. Plucked up by the root. Christ is the foundation. He is the root of the if body. You're plucked up by the roots. You have no roots. You have no you ground. Have, you you're have no, dead. You have no roots. You have no Christ. You have no Christ. But again, let, let's keep. Uh, anyway, know, but twice dead. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Uh, that why God is saying twice dead. Uh, in Hebrews six sixteen, crucified to themselves. Uh, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. Can't, yeah, and that's him to an open shame. Well, how does that happen? How does the church? Um, how would the how would the the church die twice, in a spiritual sense? Well, we can look at the cross, I guess, as okay. as you know, Christ dying and then going to the cross, and then the body of Christ dying in tribulation. Yeah. The death of the two witnesses. So that, that's a possibility there. So crucify, they have crucified to themselves. And, and this happens if they shall fall away. So falling away is akin then to the death of the body. Right? Yeah. So far, I mean, I, I'm open to uh, to anything, to correction here. But th that would appear to be um, a reasonable explanation. Uh, Revelation 11, verse 8. Their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Mm -hmm. So you see the number two there again. As God makes reference to Sodom and Egypt. What happened to Sodom and Egypt? Well, they were destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah. They were destroyed. And they typified the church, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we read here that their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is Sodom, which is Sodom and Egypt, well, that, that's the body of Christ. That's the church where also our Lord was crucified. Now, Christ was crucified not in the church, but back there, yeah. right? When Christ was crucified, uh, and I've offered, in, in one study, I've offered the idea of bearing one's cross. See, the body, you know, Christ died as a person on the cross, but then there's also the, the death of the body of Christ, which is very significant also, I propose. Yeah. The body of Christ dies in tribulation and in judgment. 
So that's why I think we would see this reference here. All right, let's take a look at the, um, is that the salvation side? Let's see. Yeah. Double judgment established. Oh, no, no, no. This is just another, uh, just in passing, I wanted to look at a couple of verses here. Genesis uh, 41, 32. And for that, the dream was double unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it. So back. there's the answer right there to the verse in Jude. Uh, the reason why they're twice dead because it's established by God they're dead. There it is right there. Okay, yeah. That, that, That's the meaning, right? I God just, when you read, I heard it. Right. Oh, there it right. is. Because it's established by God to be dead twice. You're dead. You're established because God didn't, you know, that's scary. Right, because right. God didn't save you. And yet it's a scary, it's scary, actually. Take, right. Think about that. Well, yeah. Well, that, that makes sense. I mean, that, that's part of the uh, the definition here, I think. The definition of twice is it's because it's established. You're established oh God. To be, it's to, by God that you have not been saved. It's like Pharaoh. I yeah. raised you up for the purpose of what? Remember? Bringing Remember you Pharaoh? Right. Same thing. I raised thee up just so I could so yeah. show my wonders to you, and you, and you die. <laughs> it's established by God. That was well, established by God. That's the correct definition of number two. Is established. It's right. it's that's that's a great. I, I just yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm gonna skip uh, numbers. Let's see. God is not a man. That it's like in Mark. I'm sorry. Mark fourteen thirty. Jesus said that I'm very saying to you. This day, this night before the cock crow twice. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat rice. <laughs> so all these things were anticipated. And in the latter part of this, uh, the next verse, Amen. number 2319, uh, or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? And I think that refers oh, to what, yeah. you were, what you were talking about. If it's established by God and it is certainly going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. Amen. Right there. That's the correct. Right. Oh, God. See, that's how God. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing in Isaiah uh, 14, 24. And as I yeah. have purpose, so shall it stand. I have purpose right there. Again, it's the same thing as established. Now, on no. the salvation side, I was talking about the number two, yeah. referring to both judgment and salvation. Amen. Take a look at uh, Job 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Who is Job representing, by the way? The body of Christ, the church, Christ himself. Yeah. And you know that there are there are some that they they make reference or they refer, they say that Job is a type of Christ. They always say that, yeah. But it's actually a type of the church. Is, it's the body of Christ. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> if we see how uh, God allows the, the, the body to, to go into tribulation. Well, not just the body of Christ. Job, I propose, is that it's a type of the elect. Within right. the body of Christ. Within the body of Christ, right. Okay. Yeah. That was subject to tribulation. Amen. The third part. I will bring the third part through the fire. All right. And then uh, in this particular um, section, after Job has gone through the fire, experienced God's uh, uh, judgment where he lost everything. He lost, uh, you know, family, possessions, and so on. But notice here. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Do you think this is a coincidence? God no. is making reference to the to the number two here. No, it's not. Salvation, it's not. right? Salvation. It, it, yeah. Now go ahead, Eric. Uh, so here's another one where an Exodus, an Exodus. Um, Name me, oh boy, hold on one second here. Where in Exodus 34, 1, and the Lord said to Moses, remember Moses, Moses threw the tank through the law at the base of the mountain. He broke the law. Look what happened. Right. Moses, hew the uh, hew the two tables of stone like unto the first. And I will write upon the tables the words which are written in the first tables which thou breakest. And, and, and then God again is writing them a second time. And look mm -hmm. what he says. And it says that um, in verse 35, at verse 5 of Exodus 34, and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord says it. And the Lord passed by before him, and the Lord's actually proclaiming this. The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant goodness and truth. This is tied into the double salvation right here. I'm sorry, Eric. What, what verse was that? This is Exodus 34. 
Exodus 34, chapter um Can you, can you, are, uh, 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 I'm sorry, are you able to post it or is that too much? Uh, I, you know, I, I could probably post it. I'm not on, I'm on, I'm, on, I'm using my handheld. Okay, right, so. no, no problem, no problem. So uh, Exodus 34, God speaking with Moses and a second time and just as, because it's established and God's telling Moses to hew two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon the tables the words that were written in the first tables, which thou breakest. And if when you roll when you roll down the verse uh, five, or right, let's go to verse thirty-four, uh, uh, verse four of Exodus thirty-four, and he hewed what? two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into Mount Sinai or Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and took. In his hand are two tables of stone, and the in verse five of mm. Exodus thirty-four. And the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there, stood with Moses there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Verse thirty, uh, verse six of Exodus chapter thirty-four. Uh -huh. And the Lord passed by him and proclaimed, "The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin." This is tied to the double salvation of like receiving double reward from Babylon well, from, from Babylon. Right. Because they were judged right there in the wilderness. And then God had Moses come back a second time on Mount Sinai to to write with the finger of God. Same thing with Christ when he stooped down twice. Right. When the woman was caught in adultery. Right. And I'll tell you, I'm probably one of the I, it's a that's a beautiful picture of salvation right there, where the finger of God writes on the ground. Yeah, and stoops again, and then after what you know, he was out sitting among you, cast the first stone, and he stoops again the second time, and he writes. He keeps writing. So that's that's interesting. Same thing here we see in Mount Sinai. Right, Same right. thing. The okay, law is broken. I, I so, that uh, Exodus yeah. thirty-four verse. Oh, four. oh, okay. The law is broken by the law is broken by us. We broke the law, and God comes a second time. With there's judgment in the wilderness at the time, and then God comes back. And mm -hmm. writes the law. That's it's all established. That's a beautiful right. picture of salvation. What you're talking about the double, the salvation side. Well, you know what I what I was thinking. Uh, this the, this idea of double, not only relating to the church, right? But on the one hand, it happens to Christ historically. Yeah. Christ went to the cross, made payment for sin, but Amen. then you have the body of Christ that experiences the same judgment in, in in a way because christ is the head of the body that's right and the the body of christ including the elect experiences that's that's what the uh the study bearing the cross uh you know is about bearing that's, the cross I, study. I haven't that seen that a long time i don't think i haven't read that one yeah uh the idea that. that coming into the great tribulation that's the wow. believers are carrying the cross and i think that's why hebrews mentions or talks about uh if they shall fall away that they crucify again to themselves a second time. So yeah. that, that's something to, to consider. Let yeah. me, um, all right, going to the, the next slide, Deuteronomy 15, 18, a double, hi double hired servant to thee. It shall, not see, it shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest him away free from thee, for he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee, in serving these six years. All right, well, let's let's go a little Amen. bit further. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That's 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, the latter part of the verse. By the way, let, let me go back and, and maybe try to elaborate uh, a little more on Job 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend also, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And I mentioned that this is referring to salvation. So we see the number two on the judgment side. Now we see Job having gone, well, typifying the elect, having gone mm -hmm. into the great tribulation, now coming out. What is this double that Job is re receiving? He's receiving Christ. Machine He's receiving Christ. salvation. The body of Christ is receiving uh, not individual salvation but rather the redemption of the body the body being saved the body being redeemed right, right. after uh, coming into the great tribulation so we looked at a few other verses having to do with 
God's judgment on the body. The number two, both twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And then now we begin to see some verses pointing to the uh, the salvation aspect of it. When I say salvation, we're really talking about the redemption of the body coming out of Babylon, separation of wheat and tares. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, wait a minute. That seems to be a contradiction, doesn't it? On the one hand, the language of salvation, speak comfortably to Jerusalem. What Jerusalem is that? The body of Christ, right? The body of Christ, right. Cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Well, that would mean a cessation of war. It would mean separation of wheat and tares. Right. Coming out of Babylon. Her iniquity is pardoned. Not the whole church. Not the whole body. The redemption of the body is the separation of wheat and tares coming out of Babylon. But not... Well, we'll get into that, uh, the other aspect of it. Um, so her iniquity is pardoned. So we're, we're reading. But then in the latter part of the verse, it says, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her. Okay, I think I, I, think I understand. I think I get it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's right there in the verse. It, speak, it just says, cry on her for her warfare is accomplished. The well, the, so is her warfare is accomplished. She received the Lord's hand over her sins. In other words, her iniquity is pardoned. Right, right. And this reference to the, the double, she have this is past tense. So in other words, she received double for all her sins. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're looking at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2. The latter part of the verse, for so she have received... Of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In other words, judgment came on Jerusalem. Judgment came on the church. That's the double. That's the, the judgment side of the number two, I propose. But then when God, when Christ is revealed, then we see the, the redemption of the body. And that Jerusalem now is, is pardoned. Uh, speak no, no, okay. to Jerusalem. Her iniquity is pardoned. I'm sorry. Okay, I thought Eric was talking to. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So that's what I think is in view here, Lord willing. Uh, it's not. Yeah, really the welfare, her welfare is accomplished because Christ fought for her. Christ, right. The not welfare, salvation yeah. with, uh, with judgment, but rather making mention of the fact that Jerusalem is pardoned, speak right. comfortably to Jerusalem, because prior to that, she had received double for all her sins. Right. And that's what happens to the uh, to the lost. They are receiving double if because it's established. It's established that you it's going to happen. God says, "Well, the wages of sin is death," and that's that's established by God already. It's that's what happens. It's immediately. It's just the way it happens. So you're right. good, and unless God saves you, that's the thing. Unless you're one of His and right. your hit this, your sins have been pardoned. But yeah, but at the same time, you're recompensing. God is recompensing. Recompensing, double. yes. Yeah, it's the same yeah, time. Giving, exactly. Giving the body, giving the elect twice right. as much as they had before. Yeah, he's right. We have focus on, on the right. crown that the believers receive. Exactly. At the uh, at the revelation of Christ. The revelation of Christ, right. Uh, uh, in Isaiah 61, verse 7, For your shame ye shall have double. There it is. That's double jeopardy. Or not double jeopardy. Double judgment. Ye double shall judgment. have double and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting yeah, joy, joy shall be unto them. So there is the salvation aspect. That's the salvation of that verse, right? <clears throat> okay. But again, prior to that, at the beginning of the verse, for your shame, ye shall have double. For her confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double everlasting joy. You know, this is one of these verses, as we uh, talked about before, where apparently the whole church is judged, and then now apparently the whole church is redeemed. It's redeemed at the same time, right? Right, but it's not the whole church that is redeemed. And, and the only verse that I can think of 
uh, that would seem to explain that is where we read, as in Adam, all die. All die, you're right. right. There it is. Even as in Christ, all is, shall be made alive. Right. But right. then that, that's conditional, that all there. Mr. Camping, I, I guess, used to explain it, uh, you know, pretty much the same way. But more specifically today, I think by God's grace, we see how this applies to the body as a whole. With the right, as one man. As one, as man. one person. Right. Right. Um, all right, let's, let's, well, that's Zechariah 19, uh, chapter 9, verse 12. I will render double unto thee. So same idea. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Double honor. Especially they who labor in the work and doctrine. Exodus 16, 22. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Isn't that interesting? Right. Two almost for a man. And all the yeah. leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, right. Yep. Well, why do you suppose it says on the sixth day here? Because it's the, because you could you you the sixth day is the number of man first of all and the number a man was created on the sixth day and the seventh day you have to rest you don't pick up as you don't pick up bread on the seventh day you're resting. Well, would, well, if that's the case, and it would really you know be better explained or make sense if we if God was saying that on the seventh day yeah they gather twice as much exactly. So no, I don't buy that. Oh, I, don't buy, I mean, I, I've heard, I've heard the the, the phrase. <laughs> on this man, the I'm this man. I I was just playing. <laughs> I know, I know. I I, I threw that in here to say to see what. You say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard the I, same I, thing too. I've heard that same okay. thing. Yeah. I was uh, the same. I guess the same way. I mean, just just uh, blatantly, you know, saying that well, six is the number of works simply because. No, right. You know, God right. created the world in six days. No, that, yeah. that, that's a little too, uh, too. Yeah, easy. that's not the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's not how we okay. make the definition. We we would have not to correct. that one out, and then try to make uh, more sense out of it. <laughs> Although, uh, and it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. I'm not sure why the sixth day here, but that's uh, maybe at, at some point we'll we'll come back to that verse. Uh, well, uh, well, six days. I'm sorry, Margaret. Go ahead. Well, weren't they practicing this? No, they weren't. I'm sorry. No, the, the seventh day. They weren't practicing the seventh day uh, as a Sabbath day. Well, they were supposed to rest, right? So they were not supposed well, to. Well, another rest. thing is on the sixth day, if they if they would have left any of it in the, in the other, if they would have left any of it, it would have turned it would have bred worms. That's the yeah, thing. Right. It would have bred oh, yeah. worms. Yeah. yeah. So. Although, although, wait a minute. Although, what you just said about breeding worms and Margaret uh, was trying to right. make, make make reference to something, is it possible mm -hmm. that the number six here? Is looking at judgment. In other words, it's during the tribulation. Yes. With the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Yeah. It's within the tribulation. That's how. And then the church comes out of Babylon. Then the church is rewarded twice as much as before. Yeah. So the number six might be in the in the context of judgment somehow. It is. Uh, and, yeah. And it good. is. Right, it, it, within this judgment period, and then yeah. we see the salvation of God, uh, that they gathered twice as much bread, which uh, I think obviously, Lord willing, would have to be pointing to, to redemption. Yeah, right? okay, definitely, because it's the seventh day where the the, the, uh, the uh, Christ is. This. He is the seventh day. He's the Sabbath. He's salvation. You know, you know what I'm missing here? I think I'm missing some verses. Um, really, a verse. Where we read about the the rock being struck twice. Ah, oh, you, you, yeah, you didn't have that in there, huh? <laughs> Let me see if I can find that. Moses, you know, you guys remember what verse that is? Uh, hmm. Not offhand, but I can find out. Let's see. Uh, Numbers chapter twenty, verse eleven. Numbers chapter twenty. Let me post that verse. Somehow I thought I had it. I mean, I was looking at the study the other day. Maybe when I copied and pasted, I must have left something out. 
Let me go ahead and post that verse. Because that there is a, a little bit of uh, controversy, you know, this idea that Christ made payment twice, uh, once before the end of the world, or before the beginning, you know, at the beginning of the uh, of creation. For the foundation of the world, yeah. For the foundation of the world, thank you, prior to creation. Yeah, hey, you then, know, uh, Dante? So yeah. and then this is this is one verse that is used to try to justify that. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, oh, I it says twice he died. Know. He died twice because he was stricken twice. That's what I have heard people say. No, I, yeah, I that's how we're supposed to interpret the Bible. No, no, I can't find that. I don't find it in the Word of God where it says God, the Lord Jesus Christ, died twice. I can't no, even find any spiritual once. verses that indicate that he died twice. Once before the creation of the universe. He died, buried in, and then rose, and you know, and and then he had to come to Earth and and uh, do a demonstration of all that he did before. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Don't make in sense there. to me. Yeah. Yeah. The only, the only issue I have is that when you read this verse and you isolate it from the rest of the Bible and then use that as a pretext to say, well, this is proving that Christ was. I mean, you're to me. You're 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 creating, you're trying to define what the verse is saying by your own interpretation. You're not going into the Bible and looking into so many other verses and try to get a, a, a broader picture as to what the verse might be relating to. Now we saw the number two, how again and again there are two aspects to it. There is the judgment side of it and the salvation side of it. That I think Lord Willing is biblical. And trying to understand how God is using the number two, not you know to say, well, Christ died before the foundation of the world, and He was struck one time, and then now He struck the second time. No, that, that's mm -hmm. to me that's uh, that, that's just going a, a little bit too far in trying to explain the verse. I'm sorry, Eric. Was no oh, so no, yeah. So here it is, a Exodus okay. sixteen twenty nine. See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore He giveth you on the sixth day. The bread of two days, mm -hmm. abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So, and then, of course, Christ is at the cross at the sixth hour in ninth hour. That would be the sixth hour. Darkness came upon Christ. Yeah. That's You know why darkness was there? Because God was there. That's the well, same that's thing happened. Saying. Yeah, that's, 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 what, that's what it's referring to, yeah appears to be uh, pointing to judgment. It is, it is. Christ, is the same same thing on the mountain, the on Mount Sinai. When Moses on the third day, on the third day, he was on Mount Sinai, the mountain was up on a smoke, mm -hmm. darkness and, and the cloud came upon Moses, God speaking to him through the dark, through the, through, it, it's dark. And it's the same thing over here with Christ. And that's because God's, the presence of God's there. Judgment's right. there. He's going to give most, he's going to tell most, he's basically going to give the law. And the law is, is, is a lot of salvation and judgment. Same thing with Christ. Yeah. On the cross, when Christ was crucified, the darkness in the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness and, the, 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 and there was an earthquake. And the same thing happened in Mount Sinai. There was an earthquake when God would preach. So when God would approach or descended from the, onto the mountain. It's talking about the reason why that's there is because God himself, the presence of God is there and it refers to judgment. You're correct on that. <laughs> yeah. That's very yeah. deep. That's well, thank God for his wisdom and his knowledge, because that's a pretty great uh, connection between Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, Mount right. Sinai. And, and by the way, the word Sinai has to do with the word thorns. It's right. a Greek, it's a Hebrew, and that's all judgment. It's all referring to judgment. Right. Right, right. The context where God brought judgment to the people. So he I, brought I judgment that to Christ in the body right there when Christ was crucified, brought judgment on the Christ and on the body. That's the church. We right. were there. In the body of Christ. The uh, body right, of Christ is right there. And the double and, and the double that we received, Dante, I think I believe what you're proposing here. On um, on the sixth day, God twice as much bread and homers of the man, the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Yeah. Right. So on the sixth day. This is it's very important that it's during that time you're talking about the sixth day where it's actually the sixth. It's also counting the sixth and ninth hour when Christ was judged. This right. too gathering twice as much as bread is because 
Uh, like their salvation is coming right after that. They come out of Babylon. They're, they come out of judgment. Babylon. Yes, Babylon and Egypt so and Assyria. And then there, is, there is redemption. Now, one thing I Amen. want to point out is that uh, in looking at, um, we, we saw earlier that the number two, it, it, it doesn't appear to be chronology. No. Right? All the verses that we that we looked at, chronology. Not really, we're not singling one thing out from another. There, there's no, there's really no chronology to it. And let me let me share this verse here, and I'll see if I can uh, maybe try to elaborate. In okay. Revelation chapter twenty, verse five. Uh, and uh, but the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You know, some people, I guess, they try to make some type of uh, chronological sequence to this. Well, if yeah. there's a first resurrection, that applies a second resurrection. Uh, but I'm not aware that the Bible speaks of a second resurrection, does it? No. Nope. So we just assume, or at least some of us may assume, um, and I've assumed that if there's a first resurrection. There's well, only there's one resurrection. There's not two resurrections. There's not two. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. No tribulation. There's no two tribulations. There's yeah. not two baptisms. I'm sorry. One Lord, one faith. Yeah. One and what comes after that? One, one baptism. Not two, so point, not three, not right. four. So the point that I was trying to make <laughs> anyway, anyway. is that just as the number two, we <clears throat> look at the double, the, the, the word both, uh, two shall be in a field, one shall be taken, and the other left. So we see the judgment side of the number two. Yeah. And we see that Job typifying the body of Christ, having gone through tribulation, is redeemed and now is receiving double, uh, a, a double reward. There's no chronology there. So what, no. why would we suppose that Numbers chapter 20, verse 11, and Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly. Well, what I propose here is that that's judgment. The number two, depending on the context, is looking at judgment and salvation. Right. right. So the fact that he smoked the rock twice sim would simply uh, refer to, Lord willing, that this is God's judgment on Christ. And right. historically, we see this parable, or not a parable, a historical parable in the sense that it was really portraying or showing what happens to the body of Christ spiritually in tribulation and in judgment. So, you know, this idea that, okay, well, Moses smoked the rock twice, that means that Christ died over there somewhere in the now. See, we're, we, I think, typically, we're inclined to do that. We're inclined to assign chronology to this when there's really no chronology to it. No, no, no chronology whatsoever. You know? You can't pull that out of that verse. I'm not sure why. Yeah, yeah, you be. can't. I don't think you can isolate that verse. In the verse well, right. This is, this is uh, proving that. Christ died once over there, and then he died again over here. No. No, no. That, that doesn't no. really follow through with the logic uh, I nope. propose. With, with not the at all. Problem. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So that, that's one way, I think, of looking at Revelation 20, verse 5, uh, the idea of the, the first resurrection. But we'll, we'll come back. We'll try and come back to that, Lord willing. Uh, and as I said... That might be one of the verses. That, that's probably the main verse that I wanted to, to point to in looking at the number two. Any questions or, or any other comments so far? Let me see something here. Yeah, I'm looking the rock. Uh, again, the rock, the reason why the rock is hit twice, again, it's established by God. I mean, I don't know why right. people, they miss that. I don't know. But that's the, you know what? It's okay. Everybody has different ideas. It's okay, but yeah. again, it's 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 established. That's why right. it was hit twice. Just like the, just like the, when Moses threw the Ten Command threw the law at the base of Mount Sinai, and because that that typified breaking the law, did he do that twice? He broke no, he did it once. He did it mm -hmm. once. But God wrote a, a second time the same law He gave that was on there. Hold on, hold on. The first say, that, of Ten say that again. Say that again about Moses uh, breaking what? When Moses when Moses broke the law coming down from Mount Sinai and threw at the tables away from his hands and it hit the base of Mount Sinai, Mount mm -hmm. Sinai, that was a picture of the church breaking the law of God already. And that's what that typified. 
the fact that he's broke throwing the, the, the law of the, to the to the base of the mountain and uh -huh. it's it broken half. That's to, that's because God. That's because we broke the law of God, and then God again a second time had to write the same law that He did in the first set. Write that again. So it didn't. Moses table. didn't break. Oh, yeah, break yeah, Moses. Yeah. yeah. I Most didn't break I, it I twice. Think I, I think I can relate. The idea of breaking the the, the stones of the law that would, that's what the church does. In the church breaks the law, right? That's my point. The church. Breaks God the law showed me that last year. God revealed yeah. that to me last year about the same time today. About last year, this time, I have it on my calendar. It's interesting that I, that God showed me. I was talking to someone about this, and it came. God revealed it to me. Oh, that's what that meant. Because the church breaks the law, that's why Moses broke the law. Because they did. That's what happened. They they rebelled against God by there was much playing. There they went out to play the children of Israel. The Bible says, and they 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 basically corrupted themselves by by saying that the, that the calf was Elohim that delivered them out of Egypt. And that is damn. That's dangerous, man. Very dangerous to say that, but that's what happened. Hmm. Uh. Rock twice. All right. Smoke yeah. Twice. Well, that that's that's interesting. Uh, that Moses broke the law, and then God that, God got well, God that's what another, saying. and then he 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 showed the law again, or he gave a new set of laws. He, it's the same be, law. It's the same it's law, the same but law, because it was right, broken, he had to rewrite. God this time, God wrote it with his finger. It says that God wrote it and right. gave it to Moses. With his right. finger, that's amazing. That tells you right there, God, the same, same God, same Jesus Christ. When he's on the ground, stooping down, with his finger writing, you know what that's saying? That's very powerful. If anyone sees it, that's Jesus Himself, who is God, who's come down, and He is without sin among you. Cast the first stone. My, He's right. You know what? And God showed me this, and I and I don't and I'll challenge anyone to this. I better be careful with that, but. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ wrote what he wrote. He spoke it. Thou, he is without well, sin among you. Cast the minute, first stone. Wait a minute, Eric. I mean, I, I I think I understand the point that you're you're. Yeah, you're making. it's pretty but, amazing, man. Uh, but 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 hold on one second. <clears throat> I heard someone else said the same thing, or they they said that Christ was writing the Ten Commandments, or he was writing this. Nah, that's not what he was writing. Or, or that he was writing. The Bible didn't say that. Yep, I, I understand. Let, hear me out for a minute. Yeah. We we don't really know what Christ wrote on the ground, do we? Right, exactly. He just says he wrote on the ground. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's all. He, said he wrote on the ground, but we don't know what he wrote. Right. Now, I know there are some people that they're, they're, they're quick to say that, well, Christ was writing or he might have been writing the Ten Commandments or he might have been writing the law. Or the yeah, sins yeah. of the people and marking them. No, I heard that one too a long time ago, where they're right. He's writing the sins of all the individuals. The Bible doesn't say That's that. That's just speculation. A speculation. Exactly. Exactly. That's, and we don't want to speculate when it comes to the no. Bible. If mm -hmm. God doesn't no. talk about it, He doesn't give us the information. Why speculate? Right. Exactly. Let the Lord do the talking, and we shut up. Right. So yeah. Many people, are, you know, again, they're 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 quick to come to this conclusion that maybe he was writing this, or maybe he was writing that, or he wrote this, or he wrote the law, or he wrote the Ten Commandments. We have no idea what he. I mean, God did not reveal it to us, so we we I think right. we you know, Lord willing, we we want to be a little uh, careful. Uh, you know, some things God don't want us to yeah, know. You but, know, but, we're but, not gonna know but, everything. But back to back to Moses when he when he when he threw the tables of stone onto the mountain. That's uh -huh. that was a picture of the church breaking the law of God. Right, right. That I can I can understand. You know, Lord willing, uh, spiritually, that this what happens to the uh, to the body of Christ, mm -hmm. and then God was angry. And if we read that God mm -hmm. was angry with Israel, He was angry with His people. Well, that's what happens when the church comes into the great tribulation. And so, yeah, that that to me, I think, uh, you know, God willing, would be biblical. Well, Christ says that goes because I have risen, you have uh, will be risen. Right. Well, he yeah, had, by his baptism, we're buried in him. Right, we're buried him by baptism, and mm -hmm. we should rise with him. That's that's yeah. beautiful. That's a salvation there. Yeah, amazing picture of salvation. All right. So yeah. So the you know the important thing again today. Uh, 
by God's grace, I think we 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 can come to the conclusion that and, and a lot of the other numbers, I think, pretty much follow the same pattern. Right. They're really pointing to judgment and salvation, judgment and salvation. And number two in particular, not only judgment and salvation, but a reference to to the body of Christ upon whom the judgment comes. Yep. The judgment comes on the church, on the body of Christ. And, and that's what, you know, again, I, I don't think we can assign chronology to this. No. Because the moment we do that, then we end up interpreting verses like that, the Numbers 20, verse 11. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from, that that idea of the yeah, chronology, right. number two, means right. this. It means yeah, that, that's... you know, he died here and he died there. That's assigned yeah. chronology. And that's chronology, that right. And chronology to it, I don't think we have the authority to, no. uh, to put that into... Uh, into the interpretation of the scriptures but no. anyway let me uh i just wanted to show again you know briefly the uh the conclusion that oh, I, I like on. the conclusion of that how you put it in the bubble there yeah the double appears i like that right that looks cool to the price the thieves babylon had to pay for the evil work of their hands double seems to convey the gospel god rewards babylon double as judgment for her sins not one type of judgment and then a second type of judgment that's not what the double is referring to <laughs> uh, right it's separate and, yeah right and are said to receive from her double now the church is redeemed that's also the number double is is seen is in view and that's redemption right Amen. no chronology yeah. there just redemption there's judgment the number two pointing to judgment and then redemption also since the number two can refer to the church Paying double would point to judgment on the body of Christ, double judgment that was established by God, as Eric mentioned earlier, and would shortly come to pass. Now that's right. That's correct. Yeah, was established by God. That's per, that's that's important. That the yeah. double was established. Yeah. Maybe yeah. in the chat, I'll, I'll see if I can find. Uh, if I had any other, if I missed any other verses, uh, I'll, I'll try to. You know, maybe oh, did you? Out. Did you like have it on a different doc file or something? Or? No, no, I, I had it on the Berean Studies uh, website, Berean oh. Studies on net. But oh, okay. uh, I thought when I looked at it the last time, I, I saw Numbers twenty verse eleven. But I went through the slides. You, here. Yeah, let me see. Unless I, unless I skipped it and not realizing it. Numbers uh, what? What num numbers? Which? Tell numbers me. twenty verse eleven. Well, I'll find it right. Numbers twenty. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, <laughs> mm. and the water came out abundantly. Numbers twenty. Okay, I don't see it. No, I don't see it. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I do not see that. Are you talking about? Oh, that's on the. That's from the. What side is that? That's uh, the double salvation side. Okay. I'm coming well, back. double double judgment here on Christ. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see that. Oh, wait a minute. Did it come? No, you don't have it on there. I don't see it. Christ was. I, I have this whole Babylon, Babylon, for example, received double for all her sin. Does this mean that Babylon uh, received judgment before the foundation of the world, and then a second judgment someplace else? Oh no way! No, no way! That Bible doesn't teach that. So you can't just take one verse or one word in this context and then assign a meaning to it, assign chronology to it. Right. Well, all the other Correct. verses, well, then what about them? Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Right. Uh, let both grow together. Uh, well, the both, we know that to be, you know, the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. But then the, a lot of other verses where God is talking about judgment on Babylon, on the church, there's no chronology there. So no, why it's not. there be chronology here? And Christ, historically speaking, is typifying the church. Amen. Right. In tribulation Amen. and in judgment. Amen. Right. All right. All right. So we'll end with that. Uh, Lord willing, next time we'll, like I said, uh, we'll try to see if we can do this uh, also. On, that was on fun. That was awesome. What a great study. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So exactly. we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get together, Lord willing, on Sundays and then uh, on Wednesdays. Are you going to, oh, it's going to be Wednesday? Gonna, okay. Oh, you want to say something, uh, Margaret? On both. On both. Yeah. yeah both days. Yes, I just want to say something. I did say we ought to let the let the word of God speak and we shut up. I don't want to sound like I'm mean or anything like that to oh, anybody. Okay. But but what we well, should it's true. do is you that, gotta shut up though. <laughs> but what we should do 
It's let the word of God do the speaking as it come out of our mouth and not us come up with our well, own you were speculations. Right. You were right. I mean, without I, our I, own I, speculations. I don't take you know? with what you're saying. I mean, you're not referring yeah. to a specific uh, gender or anything like that. You're no, saying in general, no. and that's what we should do. We, we let the, right. uh, I, I mean, I understand that by, you know, shutting up, we're saying that we, we want to allow God to speak. To do Amen. Without, without injecting uh, our own yes. thoughts and ideas. Right. Thank you, brother. Just be slow to speak, quick to understand something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, because it's not our understanding. You know, we, we need to let the Lord open up spiritual eyes and ears. Only God can do that. I don't care. We can explain things away. Exactly. But that's not, the, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're just supposed to share his words. But not his words, not come well, with our own words. That's all. We have to let the Bible explain the Bible. Yeah, you know, exactly. the Bible does explain exactly. everything. The yeah. Bible and we all got to be humble. It. Yep. And we and be Bible, humble before the Lord. Right. And the Bible explains, it's God explains his word. And it's, that's, that's what's so beautiful about the Bible. He's already defined it everything. He's defined yeah, everything yeah, already, which defined, is amazing. Yeah, yeah we can't it find is. anyone coming and then, you know, explaining the Bible. Well, at the end of the day, it's really someone's interpretation of the Bible. Right, yeah. right, you know, right. People are, right. Sometimes we, we could be very quick to, and, and, and that's because I think, Lord willing, that one, one of the reasons anyway, that the Bible is written in parables. And it's not, real, it's not readily uh, understood on the surface. And that's why mm -hmm. it's imperative that we compare scripture with scripture, not just pay lip service yes. to it, but actually right. go into and then showing where yeah. in the Bible that we can identify these things without taking the you know the the leap and, and right. something in Numbers chapter twenty verse eleven and just using the word twice to come up with a teaching or a doctrine that Christ died before creation and then he died a second time, which apparently mm -hmm. uh, does not appear wow. to be a consistent. No. Rest of the Bible. It's not consistent. Exactly. That's not even. That's not even in the Bible. The vision, that vision and that idea, imagination, is not even in the Bible. Right. That's from someone else's imagination. Yeah, it's not. All right, guys. Need a, okay. Good night, everybody, and God good bless night, everyone. everybody. All right, Mike. What's up, Mike? Uh, good to how's see you. How's your tooth, Lord willing? Yeah, hope you're hope you're feeling uh, better, Michael. I hope you're feeling better. That happened to me last week. I was in pain. I had to go get marsicillin. I had to do the same thing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, it, hey. It, it hurts. Okay. It hurts Good your night. whole body. Good night. Good night. God bless. Good God night. Bless God you bless everybody. Thank God you. God bless you, Margaret. Bye. God bless you, Dante. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.